We're continuing our position 360 series, and now we turn to the wide receiver group. This is a group that for the past couple of years has struggled, and to help us uh, understand that better, we've got Jason Priester from the Clemson Insider joining us. Jason, thanks for being here. Yes, sir. My pleasure, man. Appreciate you having me. So as we do in these, we'll start by talking about last year. And so, so here's the setup. I think that there's there's been this sort of chicken and the egg debate. Are the receivers struggling because the quarterback play is – is not up to par or is the quarterback play not up to par because the receivers are struggling. I've taken the position. Well, of course it's a little bit of both, but I've laid a little bit more blame on the wide receivers. Uh, one piece of evidence to that is that last year, the top rated Clemson wide receiver by PFF was Tyler Brown, true freshman, only a 68.8, which is okay. 19th highest grade uh, among ACC receivers. And he was Clemson's best. He's a big surprise, you know, great year for him. Uh, he led the group with 531 yards, four, four touchdowns. That's rock solid, but it's also kind of an indictment that those metrics led the wide receiver group. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll kick it to you there. Your thoughts on last year's performance by the wide receivers? Uh, inconsistent. Um, you know, and I'm with you. I, I don't know whether you can say, you know, it's the quarterback player, it's the receiver player. I, I lean towards thinking it's a little bit of both. I think there's a little bit – I think there's enough blame to go all the way around. There, there's no denying Clemson's wide receiver play is just kind of taking a fall off a cliff over the past, you know, you know three – you can probably go back four years, to be quite honest, um, but especially the past three years. And, and I, I thought last year they were a little bit better in some aspects than they had been the year before. Not not substantially better or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I still think Clemson lacks some lack, you know, the, the necessary or the needed speed out on the outside. Um, they just still don't have that alpha dog like they had, you know, in a Mike Williams or, or a DeAndre Hopkins or you know Sammy Watkins or whoever you want to name from from those teams back in the day. And I think you know you know a guy that can you know maybe put the offense on his back when you need when you need three or four plays in a score and drive late in the game or something, they, they just not had that guy, not that, you know, I like to call him the alpha dog. Um, you know, it, it, it's a lot of things. Um, you know, I think the blocking on the blocking out on the perimeter has been, you know, lackluster at best. I think that's an area that needs market improvement, you know, as we go into this season. I am a little bit excited for the room this year though. Um, I, I like the way it's set up. Um, First and foremost, you got to stay healthy. You got to keep those guys healthy. That's one of the biggest things they've struggled with the past three years. While, while I, I, you know, there's no doubt that the talent levels dropped off. What they do have, they've just not been able to keep those guys healthy. And I think it's hard to develop chemistry when you can't keep guys, you know, not 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 only ready to play in games, but they, they're not practicing. It's hard to develop that chemistry between quarterback and receiver when when they're never working together. Yeah, and to that point, I thought it was. Obviously, at the time, we knew it was a big deal when Antonio Williams and Cole Turner went down. I don't think we realized how big of a deal it was to lose Cole Turner because we had maybe higher expectations for Adam Randall and Bo Collins. And I don't think we knew uh, how long that injury would last for Antonio Williams. I think those two injuries played a huge role in Clemson's season. Um, you know, does Clemson win another game or two? Maybe Florida State game if they have Antonio Williams? I think so. Um, the other thing that was interesting is coming into the season – um, I, I put out on X uh, a question, a poll. Uh, would Clemson have a thousand yard receiver? This is for last season. About two thirds said yes. And I asked, if you said yes, please tell me who. And pretty much everyone, with a few exceptions, said Bo Collins or Adam Randall. So by those standards, I would say they both disappointed pretty bad. Bo Collins had 510 yards, three touchdowns, so only a little bit behind uh, Tyler Brown, but he was kind of treated as the go to guy at times. Not like he disappeared and the Clemson's four losses, he only averaged 37 yards and no touchdowns. Um, he's obviously leaving now to go to Notre Dame. Do you feel that's a big loss or do you think that's that's replaceable? I think that's replaceable. You know, I, I thought Bo Collins was a guy that could have a breakout year last year. Absolutely did not happen. Um, you know, I, I you know, as you go through the season or, or as we went through the season last year, I kind of you know had this you know decided upon myself or in my opinion kind of come to the conclusion that Bo had kind of hit his ceiling at Clemson. Um, you know, when, when I think of Bo Collins leaving, I think of a, you know, addition by subtraction, 
you got those two freshmen coming in. I, I think there's probably no argument to be made that his snaps are not going down this year. One way or the other, his snaps are going to go down. Those young guys are going to get on the field, particularly, you know, the T.J. Moore kid. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I think he's absolutely replaceable. And, and, you know, I think you can make the argument that Clemson's offense might be better with him having moved on and opening up some, you know, you know, some playing time for those younger guys. Yeah, I tend to agree. One thing that's been frustrating to me about the staff is it feels like when certain guys leave, you're, you're almost saying, you know, he's a perfectly fine player, but I'm glad because I felt like he was going to get playing time over better players. And now with him out of the way, it almost helps. Uh, another guy who had a really disappointing year, more disappointing than Bo Collins by any measure, was Adam Randall. He had no touchdowns, only 250 yards. He was much better in run blocking than Collins and, frankly, most of the receivers. But just I thought from the eye test, just I don't know if it was slow or not explosive or not quick or what, but he really struggled to get any separation. Um, and I know he was playing with some hand injuries and whatnot, but uh, is, is there hope that he's going to break out? Or he did look better in the bowl game. What's your what's your thought on him? He's kind of a he's kind of an enigma in my eyes. You know, I, this is a guy I've seen play in high school many times. Uh, he's kind of got that dog in him, and we saw. I mean, he he just received so much hype that first spring. Then he tears his ACL, and I don't know. You know, I've had a couple of people tell me he was struggling with confidence, and he just kind of he does not look like the same guy I watched in high school. You said it. He looks. He doesn't look explosive, and that is not the guy I've watched playing for Myrtle Beach. You know, in his junior year and his senior year, um, I, I, I can't really put my finger on it. You know, he, he's absolutely been a. It's you know had some bad luck when it comes to the injuries. You know, he's had multiple injuries to his. Um, he's had the ACL. He had a procedure done on the other knee. He's had more than one hand injury. I think he had a finger injury and a hand injury. You know, so, so maybe with a little bit of luck, he stays healthy. Maybe he gets some of that confidence back. You know, he, he's still only been in the, in the program two years, maybe a little bit too early to write him off. But I think this is a big year for him, man. It, it's kind of now or never. If he's going to do it, he better do it now. Otherwise, you know, he, he might be one of those guys that can kind of get passed by. Yeah, absolutely. And, and two other guys to mention from last year, Brandon Spector. It's funny. He was a guy that Coach Sweeney specifically named before the year as one of the guys they're really counting on. He had four catches, 25 yards on the season. Conversely, Troy Stellato was a guy that that was when he specifically said they can't count on him because they don't know about his health uh, and they really never know about his health. He finished with 39 catches, 339 yards. I was really impressed with him. I thought he was also like cut and – Klubnik just missed, like didn't see him and didn't throw to him. I thought he really could have had more. Not a great blocker, but he's got great hands. And to me, he's a very legit, at least second string slot guy. I really like him. Your thought, obviously, Grant Spector's gone, but Stilato's back. Your thoughts on him? I think Stilato's kind of just scratching the surface with, with what he's capable of. And yeah, I, I lost count of how many times Klubnik did not see him running wide open down the field last year. And there were a couple of times I thought he was getting frustrated, but. Um, you know, he, uh, you, you, you talked about it. he's a guy that struggled with injuries. He played banged up most of last year. He wasn't always 100% healthy. He was dealing with some things that he was playing through. So, so another guy, you hopefully, you hope he can stay healthy and you start seeing him maximize that potential. Because I remember when he was coming out of high school, man, everybody just raved about how fast he was and, you know, just the elite level speed. Again, I, I think he's just – I think last year he was just the tip of the iceberg, man. I, I think he's got a extremely high ceiling, and he's not even close to hitting it yet. So an, another another guy who this is a big year for. Yeah, so now we kind of turn our attention to, to the future, to this upcoming season. Uh, and, and, you know, we've, we've you briefly mentioned them, but I think uh, as you look ahead, what's different? Obviously, Bo Collins is gone. Brandon Spector is gone. Uh, hopefully Antonio Williams and Colton are healthy. But the big thing that people are excited about, you got two true freshmen coming in that we think are going to make a really big impact, bigger than the freshman class last year, uh, maybe aside from Tyler Brown. But uh, you got Bryant Wesco coming in from Texas. You got TJ Moore coming in from Florida. Uh, how what, what is realistic? We've the last couple of years been trained to, you know, these wide receivers aren't going to make a huge impact right away. Is this going back to the Sammy Watkins days where they can? 
you know, I think the potential is there. We saw last year Tyler Brown made a pretty big impact as a freshman. The year before that, Antonio Williams made a pretty big impact as a freshman. Um, I, I saw T.J. Moore at camp a few weeks ago. That guy, he looks ready to step on the field right now physically. You know, it, it's a little bit different when you start talking about Wesco. He's a guy that's still kind of wiry, still needs a little bit of bulk. I, I'm going to be very interested to see what he weighs in at. Come to big way in here coming up. Um, you know, I, I guess he might be about a buck eighty, something like that, right now. But you know, he's still he's got that frame. He's still got plenty of room to um, add some bulk. But for me, you know, I think he's. A, I don't know if if Wesco is a guy that can play every down for you at, at his current size. He, he's obviously going to be in the rotation and a guy that can can help you. I think if one of those guys is going to have a major impact, it's going to be T.J. Moore. Um, he, he just looks ready to step on the field right now. Unfortunately, didn't enroll early with the rest of those guys, but he has been on campus since May. So he had, so he has been in the strength program, you know, a few extra weeks ahead of fall camp. Um, maybe that gives him a leg up in some regard. Um, you know, and if he can soak the offense up pretty quick, you know, sky's the limit for that guy. Um, I think he's the type of receiver that Clemson has sorely been lacking. He gives you a, a true threat on the outside. Somebody can go up and high point the ball. Um, he's got elite speed. You know, Wesco gets talked about with speed all the time. T.J. Moore is pretty dang quick himself, pretty fast and pretty explosive. And, you know, I, I am I, – I, you know, the hope is those two guys can add some explosiveness back to that offense that has sorely been lacking in that department going on three years now. And that's frankly the problem with the offense in general is that it requires 12 plays to get a touchdown. I mean, uh, I think it was Shipley – yeah, Will Shipley did not have a 30-yard play until November. And then part of that was injury. But nonetheless, you got to break off some big runs. you got to have some big catches. Uh, so even if your completion percentage goes down a little bit, you got to hit on some explosives. This isn't the NFL. Guys are going to fall start. Guys are going to hold, things like that. Um, all right, so how do you think this shakes out? Here's what I've got loosely. Tell me what you think of this. I think Antonio Bryant, assuming he's healthy, is pretty much a guaranteed starter. Uh, Tyler Brown in the slot, maybe Salado backing him up as the other, those two guys in the slot. I'd love that if they could be your two guys in the, in the slot. And then the other outside, Adam Randall. And then you've got Wesco, TJ Moore, Cole Turner, and maybe Noah Hannafin all vying for snaps. That's a, that's a little bit of depth there. Yeah, you got, you got much better depth, I think, going into this season. And it's going to, I, I'm very curious to see how the rotation shakes out. Um, you know, it wouldn't, you know, I, I, wouldn't expect either of those freshmen to be starting game one versus Georgia, but obviously you expect them to, to, to get their feet wet and not have some snaps there. But um, yeah, I, I thought about that, you know, how this thing's going to shake out and I, I just can't make up my mind just yet. Uh, I, I've, I kind of lean toward what you said, you know, Randall and, and Antonio and then um, Troy Brown and I mean, Tyler Brown and Troy Stilato in the slot you know, at least to start the season. It'll be interesting to see, you know, again, it's a big year for Randall, how long he can hold those young bucks off. Yeah, I think Randall and Cole will fight for a starting starting spot. I think they, they sort of have the, the first right. Uh, and then we'll see if Wesco or Moore passes them, right? And I think they, they sort of will all get some snaps at some point. Uh, a couple guys we haven't talked about, uh, you know, we're so excited about these incoming freshmen, we sort of Forget about last year's freshman, Ronan Hannafin, Noble Johnson, Tink Kelly. Uh, I was pretty high on Ronan Hannafin, not, not as much on Noble Johnson or Tink Kelly. Uh, in fairness, I wasn't super high on Tyler Brown either. Um, but does Ronan Hannafin come in, make it make an impact now? Uh, maybe one of the others? You know, I don't know. There's one ball, you know, and it's just not – I don't know how many snaps there are to go around. I was a guy that I liked Hannafin coming out of high school. Not sure I quite saw where he fit in, and I, I still don't at this point. We'll see where, you know, what kind of mark he can make in fall camp. Um, I think I think Tink Kelly can maybe carve out a situational role for himself, but um, he was a guy I wasn't very high on coming out of high school. You know, unlike you, I was extremely high on Tyler Brown, but I was also very high on Noble Johnson coming out of high school, and we have not heard a peep out of him. You know, I know – I get it. He was he was raw. Uh, I thought he was a guy that could maybe work his way onto the field as a freshman, but it was pretty apparent in the spring game a year ago that he was a pretty 
a pretty good ways off from being ready. And then he goes out and, you know, he, he has to wreck and gets hurt and misses time back in All the right. spring. Yeah, that's only going to set him back even further. So I don't know if he's a guy we count, you know, count on to be one of those guys in the rotation this year or not. But, you know, it, I'm curious to see where Tink fits in, where Ronan fits in. Um, but there's, a, like you said, there's a lot of depth and there's only so many plays in the game. Yeah, so uh, in all honesty, I've been pretty negative about the wide receiver group, really going back to 2020 where I thought ETN and, and Trevor Lawrence just carried the team, or at least the offense. Uh, this year I'm feeling a little bit more optimistic. I don't think it's necessarily a strength of the team, but quarterback decision-making and certainly offensive line play are bigger concerns for me. Uh, so, you know, wide receiver kind of moving up those position rings for me. I guess final question for you. I don't think they'll have a 1,000-yard receiver, but perhaps maybe a 600 yard receiver. Who do you see leading the group? Final thoughts on wide receiver. Yeah, I don't know that I see a thousand yard receiver either. Maybe six or seven hundred, like you said, because because I think it's I think they're going to try to spread that thing around instead of relying on one guy too much. But um, as far as leading the team in receiving yards, I'm going with the freshman man, T.J. Moore. I, I think they're going to have a big year. I'm all in on that guy. <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah, I think the wide, you know, wide receiver play has been again. It's been a problem going back at least three years. Um, I do think they got a little bit better, like, or I think they caught a little bit more flack last year than maybe they earned. But it, but that's not to say that they were like drastically improved or anything, because they, you know, it, it wasn't drastic or anything. It was just minor stuff. Um, but you got to be. One of the major things for me is you got to be better blocking on the perimeter. That's that's one of the things they really struggle with in the past couple of years. Um, you know, and, and you know, uh, being a having a guy that's going to you know be able to pick up those chunk plays for you. They've just not had anybody that they can rely on to do that. They can count on to get open down the field, and when they are open, the quarterback don't see them. But you know that that's the kind, that's what they need. They need some explosiveness back in this offense, and I think they are at least heading in the right direction of getting that wide receiver room back to where it needs to be. Yeah, absolutely, Jason. I appreciate you doing this. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, man. Appreciate it, Ron. And I'm also excited to tell you about Ready Vets. They have sponsored this channel. My good friend Dr. Caps has opened a uh, immediate care. If you need immediate care for your dog or cat, and you're in the Taylor's Greenville area. Uh, just search them on your phone. Make sure you've got them saved in case you're ever in a bind and need them. You, they, they offer seven days a week immediate walking care. As always, thanks for watching and go Tigers. Mm -hmm.